goes. All right, Jeff Conklin here today in the studio, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, it's a big pleasure for me. I uh, always enjoy my talks with Jeff. Uh, no telling where we're going to go in this conversation. Um, hey, but that's the uh, that's the thrill of the moment here. So uh, welcome to uh, Jeff and talk with well, Jeff. Well, so there you go. Thank you, Mike. Uh, uh, thanks for having me in today. Well, uh, it's great, man. So what's been going on with you? Tell me, give me an update on you and what's uh, going on in your world. An update with me just another day at work hanging out um had a good discussion with greg blaylock yesterday dr greg blaylock oh yeah yeah uh, greg okay. we were talking about uh, the influence of social media and he was especially talking about it with his uh, teenage daughter right and right how important it is and he was uh thinking it's often like a diary for the for teenagers really yeah really? where they can put in all their thoughts and feelings and all that stuff oh yeah and, yeah that's a that's a real interesting concept because i've um thought of that uh, over the years basically in terms of how we built studios around and sure. uh, we've done a lot of recording and we're now using social media and kind of getting up to speed on that and um, we're certainly on YouTube and COLS.TV, our channel, and those kind of things. Got our apps out. So it led up to that. But when you go back, it was about recording and documenting what was going on. Yes. Uh, not only with myself. Mm -hmm. I, I thought, well, I don't know how interesting that could be for anybody. But, but the fact that we need to document things, it, it seems like an important idea for all of us now. And I think maybe social media has has. Uh, jump started us into that idea. So what do you, what do you think about it? And tell me about that discussion. Well, the discussion kind of changed as we were going along, and we were thinking more of social media as a way for people to have some affirmation of their existence. Okay. That, you know, yeah. we're, we're all yeah. that speck out there, and when the light winks off, we're just gone. But if we're out there and, you know, somebody sends you a like, at least there's right. one person out there hey, that knows you're there. You, you validated in <laughs> the world, right? right? You know, I put okay. up my cat unrolling the toilet paper. And, <laughs> right, right, and right. And nobody yeah, in the world thinks things. that as cute as I do, but every, you know, I put that out there or someone puts that out there. Right, right. And somebody gives you a like or says, right. isn't that cute? Affirmation. It is you, a validation yes. of, of, of existence. Existence, really. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, it, you know, the, the the thing goes, it sounds good to start with, but the thing goes awry a little bit when you know that billions of people are online and you are, then you're back to square one, maybe. I don't know. But they're doing it constantly. I mean, it's like the idea that you make dinner right. and you have to take a picture of it let's, and put it out there and say, you know, in my busy life, this is the only time my husband and I can sit down and have dinner together. Okay. Okay. And, and sounds here reasonable. it is. And what you're saying is, see how important I am? I'm so busy all the time. I was able to take time out and do this. And again, try, right, trying right, to get right. someone to um, understand that you're out there and you're doing things and what you're doing is important. Well, it may be. All right. So let's take the, uh, the other side of this. It may not be important that I know that you ate a meal or you take a picture of your plate of you're foods right. and you send it. And I go, Jeff, okay. Man, I, do you do I need this in my world? Like, but like, like, yeah, hit the like button. That's all you. That's yeah, all you that's, need to do. That's what you're saying. You, you never hit, have to comment. Hey, hey, shut up and and hit the like button. Yes, Is that exactly. what we're doing here? That's, all right, so it. something's wrong with that picture. Um, yeah, I think I think it is really interesting because you know I I put up a lot of video out there in the world. And every time I look at statistics of how many millions and millions of video go up to, say, for uh, YouTube, sure, millions and millions every hour. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I mean, what? Uh, all right, so that's a lot of data. And where in the world is this thing going to end up? I mean, we're, we're, it's almost like I want to be recognized and validated, but when everybody does it, uh, we're back to square one. Well, you know, we got to the point that he went on a 50-year-old man's rant and okay, was saying, okay. this is going to be the end. Is this Greg? Yes. And all this right. is going to be the end of civilization. All right, Greg. This is where it's all, all right. going to yeah, Tell Greg he's got to come in and, here because I want to hear that rant. I love rants. And, and I said, the next thing we need is you out there saying, get off my lawn, you kids. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. I've, but, I've actually used that one myself several or, times. Or, or the whole notion of, 
our fathers when they were in their 50s saying, right. it's the commies. Yes, You're gonna get, it's the it, red the menace. Day. It's the domino effect. Okay, you know? uh, now you are uh, an actual boomer. Uh, welcome to the club. <laughs> and and I think what what's happening is that, yeah, you, you kind of uh, – it's a niche that you find yourself in. Um, and – I, I, but I love the idea of he's ranting about something. I just don't know what he's actually ranting about. Well, and, and my comment was, I first I was the one that said, well, maybe it's just people trying to get someone to realize they're out there. Right, but, which but is a valid argument, I believe. The other thing is people really don't understand the purpose of social media. And right. it's not for you and I to have our little uh, diary out there electronically. It's really right. for some company to make a bundle off us. Well, there, there's this whole commercial idea. That's what, what it's about. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, if you really look at Facebook and what's behind it, they're selling ads. That's it. It's it sounded at the beginning like oh we're just gonna you're gonna have your own group and your community yes. and you're gonna be out here with sending those pictures of your lunch or dinner and <laughs> or whatever cat, that yeah. is or your <laughs> kids soccer game or whatever mm-hmm. that that mm-hmm. might be, but really behind the scenes if uh, I don't know if the average person knows this but it is all about revenue and ad buy and how the companies do it and individual starting companies and all of those things that's really the bottom line yes, of is. all of this yes it, and it and it goes just beyond that it's who owns the information i mean they're you know another huge issue yes and again we could go into that whole conspiracy thing and and we could talk about how that's really what it's about and who's going to have the wealth would be those again that uh, have all the information see you you've jumped way ahead in the argument which i think is fine but the idea is um that that uh it it starts out in a banal way uh, with uh, not a lot of uh, backstory, where all you're doing is communicating with your friends and yes. sharing. Yes. Share. What a great Oh, what a wonderful world. thing. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. They're collecting your data, your yes. information, your yes. buying habits, yes. where you are, your geolocation. Who your friends are, who you're connecting with. Who can They can then connect and bring those people in. Yes. You see the ad, uh, say, on the Internet. You, you're interested in an item. You click on it. It, it shows up. Uh, you, you then shut, shut it down. You go up. You pick up your phone. Wait a minute. That company's put an ad out there oh, they sure for have. you. Oh, they sure so have. So I'm, I'm just, I, 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 I think people really have to catch on to what this is about. And I think that we use it blindly. Most people use yes, it blindly. Yes, they don't have a clue. Again, it's like you were saying. It's a little forum. It's our group. It's a way to communicate. Right. It's a way to document my thoughts. Oh it's, yes, and, and and it's not any of that it's touchy feely stuff. And you've got to realize they're just using this. Oh yeah, right. that is their product they're selling. All right, but right, there's right. a lot more that they're selling. Yes, they are. Yeah. And and when you're talking about the data collection, mm-hmm. we're talking about all sorts of data that you don't even know is being collected uh, about you yes and they're using it to to sell you a product always I mean, that's that's the general idea with this and uh, you know the commercialism of everything and that's that's the capitalism as dan rose likes to talk about now it's the end of the world yes, uh, coming yes. soon uh he said you could kill off the world but you can't kill off capitalism is one of the things he said which, <laughs> i can believe he'd I, say I that found a really an interesting comment maybe a zizak comment or some sort oh yes there we go again but tell me more uh greg so how did this get started with greg on his um it's kind of a rant about well, it because his daughter is it, on social media. She's on uh, TikTok. TikTok. TikTok, excuse yeah, me. That's quite and, all right, man. And, and she's, she's making, you know, she's doing that every day. And, wow. And on her downtime, that's what she's looking at. Wow. So yeah, yeah. being yeah. a uh, good father, he decided he would see what she's viewing. Yeah, let's check doing. out what the kids are and looking then, at. And then it, it was at that point he... He began his discussion right, right. by saying, "You know, this is what's happening." Well, you don't you don't have control of um, all of that content and where the content may lead you, where it goes, because again, they're selling and it's advertising and yes. trying to get more people in, trying to gather your data uh, for use for mm-hmm. their use, mm-hmm. and so privacy is not even considered anymore in a way i thought we have to i I know i know a friend of mine who just bought a shredder now and he's one of those 
uh, tri oh, cut. Not, oh, yeah. yeah that least, way you can't little, put it back together. Little, you can't. There's no right. way to uh, put this thing back together. This guy's not on the Internet. I can believe it. He doesn't have the email. Mm -hmm. He's off the grid. He's off the grid. I like that. But he's got a shredder. He's so concerned about it. I like that. that uh, <laughs> I like that paranoia. I really okay, do. I knew you were going to go I like for this. That. You know, I'm, you know, <laughs> pay yeah. all your bills in cash. Pay everything in cash. <laughs> <laughs> have little gold coins. Don't use the banks. All you right. don't want any record. <laughs> have you watched that episode of... Uh, uh, got therapy on Hey Boomer. Okay, no, I so have you not. need to go back and see I that. I have one, not right? seen that one. So, uh, yeah, that, that's really interesting, but you have to be concerned about your kids and what they're looking at on the internet. I'm concerned about what I'm seeing on the internet. Well, you and, know? and, and you're you saying that there was something there. just this week on NPR. Right. And they were talking about the disinformation campaign. Ooh. That's being ramped up by the Trump administration, right? As part of their re-election campaign, right? To discredit the mainstream media, right? And how it's—I mean, they're really cranking it up now, and they've done it before, right? And yes, they have, and and evidently the uh, the Russians have really showed them the way, yes, on how yes. to do it now, and, and they're really taking it right out of their playbook. Yeah, how you get out there and the you set up the website. You set up the websites, okay, and you put information out there, and you see what kind of followers you get, and you keep right. pumping out these messages. And, right, uh, and if you've got the um, algorithms that will capture the data from people who connect with you around that issue or who you send it to, yes, then they've got that person. And once they've got okay. that, they can tailor the next message, right, and they can keep doing that. And right. they were saying that it now is the time to really be aware because you're going to start getting them on your phone, yes. and you're going to start getting them on your emails and all the social media. And once you're out there, and they get your information enough to connect with you, it will continue. Yeah, it's almost like you can't turn the faucet off of all of that flow <laughs> well put, of well information. Put. And uh, yeah, so the disinformation, the misinformation. Yes, there's a difference. Yes, yes there is. Take a look at that. But the, but the idea that we're in this world where just about anything goes, uh, pretty much. I mean, I guess our, you know, the, the morality, the the laws, yeah. the yeah. truth, the the thing, the rights. We think we. we really consider important in our world it's, it's sort of being um i don't know there, it's it's uh it's been downgraded if you want to use a technology term to uh to a point where um it's just not uh, you have to be skeptical about everything and and people have to get a, a certain level of knowledge about this so that they can understand what is really true and what is not. So, well, and, I don't and, know. And I think we have a real problem in this country when we discredit the mainstream you know, media. We right. really do. Um, we, we get to the point we don't trust our newspapers, and of course President Trump doesn't trust uh, newspapers because they say things about him that are true. And he doesn't like that. And, right, you know, right. he doesn't like the Washington Post. He doesn't like the New York Times. He doesn't like, right? We, right. we have that. It's and, that retaliation uh, oh. that, that is we've just seen in the last couple of weeks yes. uh, here at this point in time where if you disagree with him, he'll get you fired. Right. That's and and you can't fire the newspapers, so instead we're going to discredit them. Right. We're going to make them look like they're, you know. And sometimes they may make a mistake on a story. Sure. And they will come out and say that. Well, that's all they need. They jump right on that. And right. we can't forget this is what the fascists did in Europe right. when they took over. It's what the same thing they do in South and Central America. Yes. When the fascist governments come in and take over. And I think we have to be really um, I think concerned. a lot of us concerned about these ideas and the uh, supporters don't see that from their oh, point no, of view. Oh, no, 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 no. And what I, what I think happens is that, uh, you know, it's a slow moving process although I, I have to admit now it's kind of fast it's moving very really fast, fast and, yeah. and sped up to a certain extent but hopefully people are going to respond to this and it, otherwise we're are losing our democracy to yes. a certain extent right? well and, and i think that's a great point because i i feel some days we are but what you have to remember is there is a whole group of people that get all of their news and all of their information from social media. So when they're getting all their information, their news that way, anybody can put anything up. 
it doesn't have to be true. And so we have this whole group of people that don't watch the news, don't listen to the radio, don't read newspapers. It's so much easier to go, well, so-and-so told me this, and so-and-so told me that. So I think we have to be concerned about that, Mike. I think, I think so, uh, Jeff. I, you know, well, it, it, it's, a, it's a bit depressing in a way it is. when we talk about it. It is? I mean, it really is. And I don't know if everybody sees it in that way. Uh, that's part of the problem. But if you get constant misinformation, mm-hmm. you get constant active disinformation. Yes, uh, to slander someone, mm-hmm. you know, as it encroaches on there, all you, the people who disagree with you become the enemy. Mm-hmm. Now you've got a crowd saying, yes, the, they are the they enemy. Are, yeah. yeah. And uh, what happened to freedom of the press? What happened to those things that are that are important to, to our nation, our, our basic foundational building blocks of this nation? Well, Blaylock also brought up something yesterday with this whole social media campaigns. And one of the things he was saying is, you see something out there that says, hey, I don't like black people. And right. somebody else goes, hey, I don't either. And he doesn't either. So that's okay now. Or it's okay not to like people that are different than we are. And so you have a whole group that now are being reinforced for their racist ideas. Right. They're saying, hey, we're not the only ones. I'm not the only one that believes this. We all believe this. And it's right. not all of us. No, it's, it's not. It's that group that they listen to. It's their, what is the term we use before? Their tribe. Their tribe, yeah. I think the, the, the issue of uh, the, the tribal nature of, of some of what we're seeing here is a degrading of our democracy. Yes. Oh, and yes. The, in uh, almost a disregard for empathy and understanding of another person. I yes. mean, you can have oh. a different uh, opinion about something, but you shouldn't discount the person. That seems to be going way too far. Now, you say that, and uh, that's another news item I wanted to bring up. Just the other day, the Trump administration came out with their budget proposal uh, for you know the next fiscal year. And one of the things they're looking at is taking away some of the benefits from people with disabilities. Really? And, and that was uh, spoken about just today on NPR again. And what they're saying is $4 billion is wasted in disability payments. Well, you and I sit back and go, $4 billion, that's real money. Right, right, But if right. you look at the size of the budget for disabilities... Right. As they said, that's just a decimal dust. It's just 1% or less wow. of the whole okay. budget. It's not even worth investigating because we will spend more money than that trying right. to root it out. And a lot of it lies in the system itself and not in people trying to scam the system. It really lies in inefficient government programs. And it has nothing to do with the people. And the other thing that right. the administration is saying is, you know, if you can't speak English, you can be declared having a disability and you can collect that's not true but again it goes with that same agenda that's that that disinformation that misinformation get that out there again it's those dark skin people right right that don't speak english they're not like us not like us and And that's and they and they use that in a in a way in a, a political campaign against other people that are different and and here's the other thing i think it has this emotional undertone it has the emotional impact that that um alarms people and yes. gets people excited and oh they're going to take away something or they're going to do something that we don't like and therefore that justifies the belief in that kind of thing when it comes on well i think it's it's even worse they'll say look at all these people that are sucking off the system These people, there's really nothing wrong with them, and look at how much they're costing us, and that's your and my tax dollars, and we can't allow this to go on, so we have to stop this now. And that's what they're saying. This is people with disabilities, documented disabilities, (laughs) that need this money to live. It's insane a, a, a little bit. And what, what has happened with this disinformation is that you end up voting against your own beliefs and your own interests. Sure, sure. I find that uh, somewhat uh, 
I mean, it's hard to understand, really, right, right. when you vote against your own interest in, uh, to, to follow someone uh, because the group is following it. Well, all they have to do is hit a couple of issues that have to do with fear. And when people are afraid, they'll give up their basic human rights <laughs> just to feel safe. Wow. And I mean, we could pull That's out the huge. whole whole Maslow thing. I wish we could bring right. that up on the screen. We right, look at, right. We'll we have the to look whole at needs hierarchy. And safety is one of the basic needs. So when right. people feel afraid, they'll give up everything. You know, and, and again, it's the us against them. And, and we've come... So we have those two camps, and if you're not like me, then you're one of them. And that's what we're doing with people with disabilities. It ri- reminds me a lot of what the Nazis did back over in Germany. One of the first groups of people that they rounded up were people with disabilities because they weren't part of that super race. Oh, is that the right? Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that makes yeah. a point. And yeah. the first group they did the experiments on were people with disabilities. Right, because they could take advantage of them yes. easily. Because they're not people. And they would not uh, have the power uh, to react and, exactly. and and respond to that. That is and, and, horrible. And if you don't see them as people, it's okay to do that. And that's why it was okay to put them in the ovens first or put them in the gas chambers first. And this isn't a whole lot different when we attack people with disabilities so we can give more tax breaks to the wealthy. But that's just my own comment on Okay, that. there but, you go. But, but the other I, no, thing you're I talking you, about I, I, I hear you. Is, is we look at money for disabilities right. and we call it an entitlement because that has such a nasty connotation. Well, like that's exactly people think the they're entitled. Disinformation. Yes. This, this idea of taking, taking something and just casting dispersions on it and then, and then trying to make it evil and bad yes. and terrible. Yes. And you can do that with just about anyone. And I think that's what's happening with the people in, in, the, in this campaign you were talking about mm-hmm. a moment ago on social media and how you're about to get bombarded with all of this it's us against them and yes. you have to paint them as something terrible something bad. awful call them names yes like on kids on a playground what in the so, world is going yeah. on here well and, and they're taking our money but you have to be concerned about this because other aspects of this budget is they're going to take away some medicaid benefits and the next thing they're talking is medicare benefits and yeah. cutting Social Security benefits, well, because you know those are entitlements. The Social Security, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't we pay into the Social Security? We've been paying in since the day you started working, mister. Okay, and, there and, you and go. And the other thing is, this is when you really have to support the AARP, and yeah. this is a pitch for them. All right, let's because go. Because they're the ones that are lobbying for us to keep our Social Security benefits and to keep our Medicare, because if they're not out there. Nobody else is watching our backs. Right. And those have always been the third rail, as they call it. Right. The one you don't touch. And right. Well, so now f- we may be yes. getting closer to touching that third rail. Because, right. again, we're talking a budget that they're proposing with a trillion dollar debt. A trillion dollars more spent than we're taking in. Because he wants to increase spending, of course, for the military industrial complex. Right. And again, using the fear factor. And we want to cut more taxes off the wealthy. Oh, the wealthy need these tax breaks, right? Oh, you right? know, they do because they need another boat. <laughs> or they need another car. Or they need another jet. You know, those are expensive. You know, you can laugh, but it's the, expensive well, I, I to know, keep my I, citation, you know, okay? Multiple jets. <laughs> Come on. What's, uh, I, mean, I, I think you're missing the point here. I mean, my, <laughs> let's take a trip on one of my Learjets after the and, show. And then, I'll yeah. show you the importance and, of having a And show a me those people down below that are just stealing our money. But, but I, again, going back to the basic is issue we need to be concerned when they start calling social security and medicare entitlements because yeah, i think you're right it, about it paints that. it with a an ugly brush right. and you and i have been paying into both of those for right. for many years yes entitlements you know? that's uh it, 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 so again, it, yeah that's an interesting phrase because yes. i i think the the idea that um th- that people should not be helped in a time of need is basically against any kind of biblical point of view that we should reach out and help the poor yes. and help those. But no, now we've painted them in a way as become entitlements. We need to, you know, pay more money into the industrial complex, as you said. Yes. But also that that uh, the, it, it taints them in a certain way, and actually, it's 
everybody who's working in the U.S. is paying into Social Security. They certainly are. And, and, and the whole goal of that was to have that safety net for us right. when we were right. older and, you know, we needed medical care, we needed, you know, money to live off, that kind of thing. And, you know, if you think about it, it, when you say entitled, it just sounds so dirty. It, right. it really right. does. Well, that's and the so phrasing. that's why we paint it that way. Well, it's the phrasing. And, yes. it, you know, we really need to take a look at certain words that come across in these things and highlight them and pull them out and make a, a response to them because it becomes normalized. Yes. And that's yes. what I think is a big problem around this whole political atmosphere that we find ourselves in. Uh, the, the, the things that were uh, highly objectionable uh, now become normalized to the point where you can say whatever you want to ab- about another person. It doesn't really matter anymore. That uh, you can, and and it, it comes at a time when we were kind of making some headway. In we that, were in that in that world uh, to show respect for people. Well, and and you say that. Remember, you have a president right now who made fun of a reporter with a disability. Right. So again, we're shaming people that have a disability, and this all <laughs> this all fits. Good. And you asked, you you pose the question about taking care of people, and you right. use that in a biblical sense. But I also think as a society, yes. what does it it's mean? A civil to, thing, yeah. What does it mean when you have a society? It means we take care of those that can't take care of themselves. That's just the right thing to do, regardless of where the origin of that is. This is the right thing to do. That's just what we're supposed to do. That means that we're a civil society because we're taking care of the weak and we're taking care of the hungry and all of those people. But no, now we look at them as a burden. Just suckers on the system. It, you know, and it comes down to this idea of winners and losers, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're just painting everything in this black and white, w- w- one or zero. Right, uh, right. Binary. Binary world. again, yeah. So yeah. I'm good, they must be bad. Sure. I mean, how long is that going to last before people catch on? I mean, haven't they watched the science, sci-fi movies where the dictators and haves uh, are in, in total – uh, chaos with the not haves <laughs> or the have nots, and the idea is that we we split ourselves and divide ourselves. Sure, and that's a big problem, and we know it. But we like that the government, a lot of people likes that like that splintering of us into different camps. That way, we don't get together and say, "Hey, this is wrong. We're being taken advantage of." But this way, right. we're all fighting for scraps. And that's pretty much what we're seeing is people fighting for scraps. Well, what gets me sometimes, too, is the, um, the idea that the poorest people, the people who don't have the wealth, right, voting for the people who will take more of their money, their wealth away. <laughs> yes, yes, They're yes. voting and they are supporting things that are not in their best interest and it continues. It, it is. It's mind-boggling to think that that's how. That's a point that we've reached. Well, and and it's like the wealthier saying, "Hey, we're going to have a big party, and we really like you to be be there with us, and you, and you can come and and come to our big party because right. it's a big tent, and we're all going to be in it." But then when the party starts. You can stand outside the window and look in that's, as we have our party. That, that's right. We don't want your kind at our party. I think it's I think it's kind of interesting too that in this uh, these these political groups have sort of gotten walled off from the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's mm-hmm. no uh, counter argument or counter response uh, in the group, so that everybody is thinking the same in the group. Right? Uh, have you not? I mean, uh, have you not considered the consequences of everybody having the same ideas and believing whatever is given to them or put on the billboard or uh, shouted at them in a uh, rally of some sure. sort? And, and you just want to go along to be along? I guess, I guess the idea of belonging is pretty important. You mentioned that earlier with Maslow. Well, and, and the other thing we have to look at is nobody wants to stand up and say the emperor has no clothes. Correct. And that's that counter argument. Instead of saying, hey, wait, we all buy in. Or the group buys in. The group in. buys yeah. in, yeah. yeah. 
So. Yeah, there, there's some there's some folks out there willing to uh, take it on and stand up and be ind- individuals and um, make up their mind based on the evidence and the information as Facts. opposed to – Oh, I'm sorry. You mentioned the uh, F word. <laughs> the F word. <laughs> Jeff How dropped that, the F bomb this morning. He said facts. We sure wouldn't want to do this. Um, that may be the title of this show right there. Could be. I wouldn't mind that. I'm, I'm a little uh, – I'm, I'm just kind of wondering what happened to facts and the information that is – actually backed up with evidence i mean when did when did everything go awry and now you can make up whatever you want to and sell it because yes. going back to an earlier part of our conversation right. of social media if i can blast it out there to everyone and get people and some people will uh, object to it but others kind of take it in and yes that must be it must right be because, true yeah and i'm going to spread it to my other friends so that they know I'll it put it out on I... social media and everybody will know <laughs> well the other thing about it and and we've learned this from the present regime, and that is, it may not be true, but if I say it enough times, people will believe it. You know, if you just repeat yourself yes. over and over, you're eventually going to get some people that are going to go, well, it must be right. Well, he's, look what he's saying. Well, now, think of, think of it now. So you, the guy shouting this, uh, whatever that is, and you share it on social media. Well, then it gets picked up by your friends and yes. then their friends and then the companies and then the other people and the, it goes viral. That's the term. Yes, and yes. Wow, you covered a lot of ground, but you've influenced a lot of people with some bad ideas. I think there's a problem. It reminds me of a cancer, the way it okay. spreads like <laughs> all that, all right, you know, because right. uh, to use a term that has a negative connotation, that one works very well, but it's that same sort of thing. Um, the other thing we see with the use of social media like that, and that is how quickly people jump on those ideas. Right. I mean, I right. put it out there and you see it and I mean, you can't send it out fast enough. And right. by the end right. of the day, it's out there and your president likes to get out there and, and, you know, tweet something, whether it's true or not, and he'll put it out there and that's his position. And then in two months, My he'll president? go in two months, he'll go back and say the exact opposite and say, I never said that. Exactly. And people never hold him accountable. Oh, they no. never say, come on, what's going on here? You How can you be on both sides of the street? Well, you can't be on both sides of the street, and, and you can't have uh, opposing ideas. I mean, there's this this, this idea of, of holding uh, disparate ideas together uh, so that you can look at, weigh the evidence uh, think about it, come to a conclusion about that. In some cases, two different ways of looking at the same thing is correct. Oh gosh, so really, what a uh, thought! <laughs> but but the idea is that the you know if if you don't uh, remember some history, if a person says this is the way it is, and uh, a little later they say no, it's not like that. It's right. like this. I didn't, say and you that. don't remember that, and you don't go wait, what's going on? You just you know, you you keep up with the new uh, message today that that it, it looks like it doesn't matter what happened in the past. So we're yes. forgetting history at an alarming rate here, or, I think. Or revisionist history. We keep changing it to be history. true. Uh, you know, and again, going back to part of this argument is don't confuse me with the facts. Yeah, you the know? facts yeah. are uh, not as relevant because, uh, I mean, I, I they don't go it, with my campaign. Well, I thought it was a benign idea. Uh, back when Kellyanne Conway brought up on the news uh, alternative facts. She is the scariest person when she says things like that. It there is, are no alternative facts. There's facts and there's facts. That's it. All right. Let me, I need to get a close-up on you when you're you know, when I'm ranting. ranting on you this wanted side. a rant, and I, uh, I didn't know we were going to go that I way. Love, I love rants, but um, yeah, so uh, yeah, and, and it's scary that uh, I, I, I believe this because there's a certain amount of evidence and there's proof and there's I've got all this information but you come along and say uh, not so fast partner yeah here's another way to look at it and mine is right wait you can't be both all right so we're we're in a pickle my friend I don't know how we're going to come out of this I, anybody got any positive I, ideas I, I, about I this? don't have any on that I would just like to go back to something we talked about a little earlier we were talking about entitlements and Medicare and Medicaid. Yeah, and that, man. that leads me into one of my other topics for today, and that has to do with medical costs. 
Really? Okay. And, and, and right, you and I both are well aware of such things as doctors having you get lab work done at providers that are out of network. Right. And you have no clue. Right. And you think your Blue Cross is going to cover this or your yes. Medicare is yeah. going to cover this yes. or yourself. And then you get this bill and all of a sudden it's 900 out of pocket. Right. Because they're it out of network. Covered. You thought it was covered. It's not covered. That's right. And we're also finding many of your doctors aren't in network. Right. There's a health care provider I use, and okay. I'm not going to name any names. Okay. And uh, some of the doctors in the practice are not Blue Cross providers. So you have to ask, is so-and-so, you know, a Blue Cross provider before I go there? Because you just assume that. And so, uh, in other words, you get this huge out-of-pocket expense. And not everybody can pay for that. I'm, I'm wondering... Um, it, it seems to be, and this is, I'm, I'm going to, I'm jumping a little bit here, okay. but the idea that we have to be well informed and we have to be critical thinkers mm-hmm. and we have to be aware and we have to look at everything with a new critical eye now because of these things that these, uh, automated, uh, internet driven, uh, social media driven. Okay. I may have put okay. on there, throw okay. that one in there okay. as well. But the idea that that uh, we don't know if our medical coverage uh, is there when we need it. We don't know uh, it, whether it would be a coverage. I, I'll I'll tell you my own own story. Got yeah, some blood yeah. work done, right? And a right. uh, person came out, and the doctor had ordered like seven different tests on this on these blood. I had to give a yes. lot of blood that day. Was, yeah. Anyway, but that, yeah, <laughs> like vampires over there. But yes. but the idea was that um, a person behind the counter was nice enough to come out, sit with me in the waiting room, and say. You know, we're not really sure if this your coverage based on what we have yeah. of these three tests will be paid. We want to inform you that you may have to pay out of pocket on these. Now yeah. that was a very nice thing to do, and I appreciated it, is. it, it so is. much, knowing ahead of time. But what if she didn't? Yeah, what, it would just come in the there would be a bill in the mail, and there you go. You're you're you didn't know. And my own personal story, I had a biopsy. They sent it off to a lab, totally out of network, and the $900 bill came out of my pocket. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And nobody informed me. I had no idea. The doctor never said anything. The, you know, the, the nurse, the, you know, the, the practice never said a word until the bill comes. I, I just, I, I don't know how to, um, I, I, it takes a lot of learning with this. Now, um, you know, being the retired guy, right, uh, right. One of the things I found out is when your company insurance ends, you better have a plan. You better <laughs> yeah. have, and I'm talking the general plan, not right, a health right. plan. No, you no. need to find you a health plan. You better have a plan. But um, to a certain extent, you you uh, you're going to have to incur all of those costs that yeah. you got help with when the company there. So now you're on your own and. You know, when I first retired, I got, uh, and I still do, I keep getting these calls uh, from health insurance. And oh, sure. Medicare and oh, all sure. of these things that keep coming because um, it's a big industry. It's oh, a huge, big business huge. to get your dollars for that. And the thing that occurred to me was how expensive it was. It's out of sight. So if you're working, um, keep stay, working. Stay keep working. working. <laughs> well, well, now you say that. Um, not only do you get it that way, I get it in the mail every day from another provider saying, here's supplemental insurance, here's supplemental insurance. You need to get this plan. AERP sends me an envelope at least once a month saying, here's some supplements, additional health insurance. And I'm glad I'm employed and still working and yes. you know, paying in because I'm covered. But everybody believes or misunderstands that once you retire and you've got Medicare A and B, you're all set. But there's a huge hole in your coverage that's outside of A and B. Wow, and that's what yeah. you're talking about, yeah. right? Yeah, you're, you're talking about it, and and I think what um, you know, you you have to learn these lessons. I mean, you can listen to us about it, but right? You uh, people who are out there are really going to have to figure out the impact of this on their lives and then learn to 
ask questions sure. and get involved. Sure. And so that you ask your doctor, is this going to be covered? Well, he may not know. Exactly. He wants to do the right thing for you, but someone in that office may know, or someone you can check with your insurance company, or the one you have, or and and you can find out if this is this is covered. So it's a little bit of a dilemma because hey, he he's recommending a test that might help you save sure, your life even sure. in some ways, but then you're going to have to pay for it. Wait a minute, let's see if there's some alternatives here. Maybe I don't know. Well, and, and you mentioned that uh, one of the other ones is let's say you have a heart attack and they rush you into the emergency room and they take you into surgery and they do all this surgery. You're not aware if they're covered by insurance or not. You just want to live at that point, right? And if you have a doctor that's not covered that you know isn't a medicare provider or is it under one of the supplemental insurance companies baby that's your cost <laughs> <laughs> that is uh so true yeah. so there's a lot of things going on all right let's let's see if we can we we'll pull this in but i want to i want to hear more about what you were saying about from that npr uh report as well okay but but um all right so we started talking about um, a rant from uh, a friend of ours. A friend of ours. Yes. We both know he's yes. been in the contributor studio. here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He's he's yeah. been here, uh, and a little concerned about what his uh, daughter was uh, seeing on the internet there, and uh, that led into his sort of responding that wait a minute, there's a lot of things that shouldn't be the the <laughs> daughter may not need to see those kind of things, and it's so easy to do, and it's so easy to do, and there's so much out there, it and it then move into this whole social media idea that uh, uh, wow it's influencing our lives in lots of ways even to the politics and who we put into office and then the the idea of how that uh, privacy is no longer a, a, an issue I mean it's just gone away in some ways and how do you protect yourself certainly certainly and then and then leading up to not only the politics but now the medical care on, right. and how we survive and and get attention when we need it well you know made me all made me think about all these ideas sure. that maybe it's too much for people <laughs> and maybe it, it, that's what they're saying. Yeah. You know, I don't have time to pay attention to social media right. that, that right. My, my kids are watching. I don't have time to look at health care costs. I don't have time to look in to see if what people are telling me is true. Right. I don't have time. You know, it's almost yeah. like I just have to sit back and, and just take it, let it happen. That's an Because Im- that's, I'm overwhelmed. That's a really important point that, look, the, the average guy out there who – and woman and family really in a sense is living their lives day to day it's they're the not they paying attention do. to all this stuff that's in the news they're not reading you said that earlier we today. know that okay um and something about a bell-shaped curve you you mentioned i was gonna too. bring that up oh yeah okay there you go uh that uh, how many people uh 84 percent are average or below okay okay and all we right. can't that's, ever forget uh, that i don't know. know nobody and, wants and, to hear that and, and hear again people clicking off the video right and again now. they're overwhelmed but they're overwhelmed, and yes. so they don't have the time. Their day to day life is to make a living, deal with the kids, just deal with try the to work, get by, get through, yeah. repeat the next day. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a, it's a shame. It's a shame because I think really the information now is much more available. Uh, the internet is there. Okay, uh, you okay. can uh, take a part of your day and read a book or listen to an NPR yes. program, like you do, and there are other other kind of things that happen, and become more informed. I, I can't see us surviving very long without being informed. I don't know how this is going to go. And, and I don't disagree with you. Um, I teach a class called uh, Information Literacy. Okay, uh, and in that, I like it. And in that course, one of the things, one of the textbooks I've used a few times is called "Information Anxiety," having to do with information overload. We have so many inputs, we have so right. many feeds, we have so much coming in, and we can't even look at it. It's like think back when you used to have magazine subscriptions. Magazines, you, I've heard of. You those. remember those kind of glossy things? <laughs> yes, but they used to come kind of to your like. house. And, you know, you'd start out and you were cool. You'd have hot rodding and gardening and cooking and you'd read them. And then right. after a while, they just start piling up. And you say, you know, when I get a chance, I'm going to read that. And you pile them up. And when I get a chance, and that chance doesn't come. Well, and, that's, and that was just using magazines. Right. Now we have the instant feeds. Right. You know, right. And, and you and I were talking as we got prepared for the show today of 
you know, what sources do we use? Well, I look at the New York Times every day. Yeah. And I read yeah. the Grand Rapids Press every day. Okay. And I look at the Columbus Ledger and Choir in the print edition every day. Oh, now and we're talking. I, and I listen to NPR every right. day, like mm, all day long. It's yeah. And, and I'm trying to get all these news feeds, but I stay away from social media. Okay. I mean, uh, now and then I'll look at Yahoo when, okay, I, when okay. I get on and I'll see all their, you know, the trending the news trending stories. Thing. So, yeah. Somebody's wearing a dress about made by somebody uh, at a, a certain or, or thing or something. This, I don't know. Yeah, something happened to this person or, you know. But again, it's so much information. It is. Even for me. And and then what happens, I think, too, is um, I've come across these news feeds and these things, these uh, well, it's really corporations, it's, it's uh, industry now, where they summarize the news for you. Oh, yes. You don't have to read the entire article, my friend. We'll give you a blurb of three or four sentences, and now That's all you you're need? moving on. Well, and, and That's think, something's wrong with that, right? Well, one of the <laughs> things that we talk about in that information literacy course is if you're getting your information that way, somebody's screening it for you. Somebody else's yes. biases yes. are determining what you're going to be fed and in what form it's coming. So they may leave out some parts that you oh. would think are very important, and they deliver something that is not – that. but you don't have any control over that. that well, and it would be the same as if I read the newspaper and then tell you what's in it. Let and I'm going to tell you the stuff that's important to me, right. and I'm going to give it the slant that's important to me, and if it's not that important, we may not even get to it. So right. then you hear me tell you that, and you talk to your friend, and you say, hey, did I you? I spread it, by the way. Exactly. Right, right. And that's what's happening on social media the same way. Yeah. We're yeah, picking little bits out. Yes, that's what's and happening. And that's what right. we're putting out there. And so, right. again, you've got all this bias and all these filters that yes, aren't it necessarily. Is it is filters. That aren't necessarily your filters. It's not your filter. You or see. your biases. Well, uh, you may not ever hear. We, we've um, had a, a show not long ago on confirmation bias. The idea yes. that you tend to believe what you read if it's connected to what you already believe. Exactly. And it exactly. fits into your little your world. schema there. Yeah. Yeah. And if, as long as you're doing that, you don't ever get to hear the opposite argument the difference but what somebody else says no it's not that way think about this part of it or think about that aspect of it so you're not privy to that information so you believe what you think is right you know but you never heard the <laughs> argument from the other person you know you say that and you find that out when you teach graduate classes oh and okay. people write papers yes and they'll pick a topic that's interesting to them and they'll only find articles that support what they already know about it. And when you call them out on it, and they'll say, yeah, that's true, but it's easier. And you'll oh, say, no. but you never no, learn anything that way. If you never look at the other side, you never learn anything. You stick with the same information you already have, and you just reinforce it. And that makes it tough. And now, that, that you, uh, you know, this, this, this entire show may become depressing for a lot of people who are listening yeah. to it. So, I'm hoping so, it gets so, them. So you want to change the tone. No, I, I, no, I don't. As a matter of fact, I do not. What I, I'd, I'd want to caution people with is this this idea that you should be a little upset. You should be a I hope little so. bit concerned, if nothing so. else, just a little concerned that – you're being fed information. You really may not get the full story on what's happening. You may get the headlines, but the headlines have been given to you by someone who screened it yes. uh, and filtered it for you. Yes. And here's what I think you need to know. Well, and I'm and it's a headline because I think it's I think it's the most important thing, not necessarily that it is, but the person that's screening it determined that. So I think that's all a big part of us consuming information and how we look at it and what feeds we have. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a dilemma, if nothing else. <laughs> we find ourselves in a very strange world now. And you could not have predicted this would go no, like this. No. And I know that you and I have talked about this uh, literally for years of where the technology races ahead of how we might use it in our best interest. And the technology that we find ourselves in with the social media, the apps, the Internet, the connection on the phone, the, all of the computer stuff that we know about, uh, we weren't really prepared 
to see that technology take us to the point where we are now and it has invaded our lives in so many ways. And if you're not a thinking person, if you're not the person who is sort of grounded in this and and maybe uh, they talk about the Missouri state uh, show me state show me state yes. show me something here that and and again and the Walter Cronkites of the world where you just listen to the facts when I was growing up right that right. was the way it was you decide Ooh. what you make of it but here's what's going on and I I that we're not in that world anymore. And, and, and we're not in Kansas anymore. And you mentioned somewhere. Walter Cronkite. When he spoke, you believed him. Yeah, because be, be, he was credible, well, right? And why was he credible? Because he knew that was the important thing. Not to get his message out there, but to l- deliver the news as accurately as possible. And so we believed in him. We trusted him. I don't know if we have sure, the same trust today about me. Well, I'll well give trust you a, is a very different issue. That's mm-hmm. almost a, a, a an entire program. Oh, it could be episode okay. we could go with on this idea of that. So, well, yeah. and uh, again, when we're talking about all this information coming in, it's overwhelming, and all these feeds are overwhelming. And sometimes we're better off if we just cover our heads and, and move along. <laughs> you know, it's you the know, turtle com- syndrome. <laughs> coming from you, uh, I know that's not something you're going to do. No, uh, no. But but yeah, you 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 got a you got a real point that that uh, with the information overload that you were talking about just a moment ago. Uh, with sort of a, a you know we got to talk generations a little bit that and and Greg's daughter and sure. and, and others that that are coming along uh, with a in a digital mind as they talk about right it, right that it's going to be different very uh, it doesn't it sounds like a calamity about to happen <laughs> because if you just believe anything that comes along what's popular uh, what's sensational what these social media influencers are right. doing uh would never digging in and doing a deep dive into the information and doing the critical thinking to sort of s- set things apart and go wait a minute this might be bs right. or this guy is lying to us <laughs> uh you you may come out believing things that are one again not in your best interest right. but two maybe even wrong but how much work is that to determine who's telling the truth yeah, and, is people want, and the other thing I want to go back to, something you said, sure. we want to upset people. The problem we have are people are upset all the time, and they don't want to be. Right. right. They don't want that feeling. Yes. They, you know, that's, that's that whole conflict. They don't want to feel that. So that's why they will bury their heads in the sand. Right. Or they'll just accept the first thing that comes down the street because I don't have to worry about it. And you know, and maybe that's why we have so much escapism in this country. Well, there's it, there's that you know, right? and I and I was thinking, and it was another topic I was going to bring up to you. Yeah, and, come on. and it's kind of related is the uh, recreational marijuana industry. Okay, Cause what about a, it? That's a big thing, growing industry in this country. Yeah, it is, and uh, still illegal according to the feds. Yeah, the federal government and the state governments are not aligned in no, any they're of not. this. And, and the yeah. states are the ones that are licensing it, looking at a, a revenue stream. That's the only reason they look at it. They don't look at it for any other reason. And then your feds don't watch even using the banks because it's an illegal enterprise. That's so true. you have true. all of these marijuana sellers and growers that are bringing in huge sums of money. Right. And they can't put it in the bank. I don't understand how that works when you can have a company in a state and you can't use the banks. Banks that, have federal charters. Okay, so it's the feds <laughs> versus the state. Yes, so it states' is. rights versus the fed. Okay, and, and, I don't, and I'm right not sure now I understand how it, d- that works. it depends on the issue, how it goes with the federal versus states' rights. But but with the whole recreational marijuana industry, you know, they're still feeling their way in many states. It's huge business. And, you know, the states are looking at it as like, this is going to end our fiscal problems. We're going to make all this money. It was like when oh, they... Oh, you're right. You know, I mean, that's, it's all about the money, isn't it? It's, it's it doesn't always about, about the money. The, no, the, no. The, the positives and no, the negatives no. of, the, uh, of the situation, no. uh, what, it, what the drug, and all those kind of things. It's really about the bottom line of who's going to make some money on this. And it's, that's a terrible way to it, decide what's but, good for us. But it's right. like alcohol 
And it's like gambling. You know, in the state of Georgia right now, they're kicking around the notion of legalizing gambling. Yes. And whether it has to do with casinos, bringing in more casinos or right. having casinos, or going to be sports betting or whatever. And, and they're kicking that around. And your sport team owners, of course, are behind this. Right. And their comment is, well, it's already occurring, so we should support it. Right, right. And my yeah, response that's, that's is, well, argument. so is prostitution, <laughs> but we're not supporting that. So, and, and all I'm saying is, you know, it just depends how you're getting your money, you know? Well, you know, it seems like that almost all of these issues are complicated. Oh, very much so. But at the same time, we don't want complications. No. Right? No. So make it easy, make it simple. And deliver it to us to us in some way that we don't have to worry or be concerned about it, and we just throw our hands up, let it go. Maybe we need the great Oz <laughs> to come and make our decisions for us, so we don't have to think. Hey, listen, I was thinking more about 1984. Uh, exactly, the, the, the man. Exactly, is the us man's going to just tell you this is how it is. And, and right now, we have a government that would like to do that, have the man tell you, but uh, that's part of our conflict. Is is we're not ready for that. And, well, and and a friend of mine has recently been saying this could be the end of democracy. Oh my! Okay, there and, you go. And there's another topic that's bigger than today's show. Well, I tell you what, it, it, it is a concern because that's the news headline now, and you see it out there. Um, it, uh, you know, vote. This may be the most important. Uh, election oh, yes. that we've ever yes. had. We've you said that, that your whole life, though, haven't we? Well, that's another thing. I mean, <laughs> you know, okay, don't wear out something like that. But yeah. the idea yeah. is there's so many things now to sort of point at that it might just well be uh, at least in the in the next four years or so. So uh, there's there's probably some concern that you should have about whether our democracy has been undermined uh, in in the ways that we've been seeing lately. Oh, I think it's under threat. I really do. Okay. Uh, I think we have to be very concerned about that because I don't think we have balance of power any longer. Okay. I don't think we have the checks and balance system that you and I were raised to believe exists. Right, right. Um, I think it's one-sided or the it's other. It's very it? much so. We, we're so it's polarized a, we don't work things out anymore. We because don't. It's party before the people. And we have to go back to thinking about our people, right. not our party. Right. And, and right. we're so divided on that right now. It's been a long it, time it, coming like this with the... It has been. You know, with, with the, the the way campaigns have been carried on and state legislators are sort yes. of dividing up counties oh, into this thing and the gerrymandering that's happened in so many different <laughs> ways that, that now you've got a smaller group controlling everything. Mm -hmm. That's you not sure democracy, do. is well, it? No, no, and the whole gerrymandering thing is, again, that whole push where... The party in power wants to stay in power. Yes, they so do. So they make it so groups that, even if they outnumber them, can't get control. Right. And, and it also goes back with voter suppression. Right. And, and we're seeing a lot of voter suppression. We're right here Especially in the state, right here in the, the South the state of where Georgia we've done too, that. And we said everybody's got to get their gold ID, so the gold star on their ID so they can vote. And you know, Yeah, one thing I heard the other day on a news program was that if you signed your name this time different than – and then say you had yes. an initial, you left initial out. It doesn't count. They throw your ballot yeah, out, Yeah, right? you know, that I kind mean, of thing. And, and then also we're getting – so the talk is – because remember, this is a census year. Right. And we're seeing some suppression of true census taking, where you have some states that are putting no money into it because they don't want certain groups represented. Yes. They don't want them counted. Remember, your current administration tried to do this right. by putting in a question on citizenship because they right. knew it would scare people and would keep them from identifying themselves. So we, we don't get the actual fact we don't of want the what fact. the numbers and, are and remember it's extremely important we get an accurate count because that way yeah, people are represented where are the population shifts those people need to be represented and so i you know again it's all part of the voter suppression the you know reducing the number of people that vote so the people in power can stay in power people need to so stay it's in not power, a do we democracy we don't want a democracy all right, now, the, okay, stop right there, my friend. 
<laughs> uh, we don't want democracy. That would be a very sensational headline that for, would this, be. Yeah. for this particular yeah. <laughs> episode. We, and, uh, we, we could just I'm keep tempted, going with that. I'm tempted to do now, that. Now, you but, want to uh, talk about Mr. Rogers. Well, what I want to do is, um, <laughs> in, this, in this segment, I think uh, this show today, and we're coming toward the end of it, because yeah, we're going to yeah. have to need to, to – uh, to bring up some things, maybe, but just for a moment to bring okay. up because okay. the part of the way that that we, you and I, talked about doing this uh, right. podcast was right. about you, you know bringing in some information mm-hmm. from different sources. One being NPR, which we both enjoy, right. and uh, and then looking at some local issues, mm-hmm. and then looking at people in a general sense. That's a wide open category, right. by right. the way, which we've done. Yeah. So here, here's what I want to do. I want to try to kick this off. Okay. Not now. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, full blown. Okay, but the next time we meet, next right. week, next when week, when we no. come in, that, well, that you're serious about it. I'm serious absolutely. About it. We're you know? going to do this. Yep. We're going to bring in an NPR, and we're going to uh, 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 some information from NPR. We're going to take a look at it. You bring yours. I bring okay. mine. That kind of okay. thing. So here's one of the first ones I, I, I looked at on NPR, and it was really just a couple of days ago. There's been a lot of uh, mo- there's been a couple movies uh, about uh, Mr. Rogers. Sure. But here it was on NPR, and I'm going to scroll down just a little bit here, uh, and it's the man behind Mr. Rogers, away from the neighborhood of make believe, and this was by Kathy Newman, and and there are some great photographs in here, but people wanted to know. Take a look at this mm-hmm. one. Um, that what was he like behind the scenes, sure. off camera, and sure. so forth, and it turns out that he was. Exactly the same. He was Mr. Rogers. He was Mr. Rogers, <laughs> yeah. and I and I gotta say that. Uh, and I, again, I'm I'm scrolling through this pretty fast, but let let me just say this: that this person has made a, a big impact on my life, but oh, yeah. on a lot of oh, others yeah. and kids and so forth. And uh, I, I'm glad Kathy um, Newman put this uh, particular article together and. Uh, she was a photographer, and you just saw, saw some of the photography there. Wonderful work. But she was saying he really is. He cares about kids. Yeah. It's about heart. Yes. He believed in that. Yes. It, it, you can't uh, paint a negative view of this. Uh, this guy was genuine. He was authentic, and he loved kids, and he helped kids oh, yeah. and set a tone here that uh, will, will it'll be hard to replicate in well, any, any and, case. And there's two things that I always think about with Mr. Rogers. And one was when he testified in front of Congress about public broadcasting. It was because of what he did, we have the funding or had the funding we did for public broadcasting in this country. And the second thing is, is children dealing with grief when something bad happens in their life and how concerned he was, how well that would would play, you know, how well that would work with children. So I always remember that. Yeah, I I think uh, for the most part, uh, it, it is an amazing thing, and I, I and we're going to get into more and more um, NPR uh, news and ideas and concepts and articles that okay. come up. So okay. we, we'll start that next week full blown. You but bet. I did want to kind of put this okay. in to kind of jump start. I like that. I wanted that, to see what nice. what it was yeah, all yeah, like. That was nice. all right. So let's take a look at some of the local news. Now you say you read the newspaper. I read it this uh, morning. Uh, the. The, the the actual paper, not the digital. No, version. I, I I only have to read the darn digital one on Saturdays because they refuse to print the paper one on. Okay, you know, well we don't you have can, that hard you, copy. You, you're gonna have to take that up with the ledger I did. here. I bet, I bet <laughs> you, you can did. count on that. All right. <laughs> well, here's something out of the paper, and this was uh, really yes. interesting. Very quickly here, this uh, last of the World War II legendary. Flying Tigers dies in Columbus. He was 99 years old, and what a wonderful uh, way to celebrate a man's life in this. I I saw that article. I thought that was great. Yeah. Absolutely lovely. And um, I also um, wanted to share uh, a website here. Now let's talk about – you know, so we've got NPR, we've got the local news, and uh, we'll start next week full-blown with this. Right, right. There's a category I called – 
what about people? Well, I did a little. I like this one. I did a little search. It goes with your eighty-five percent or average or below, and uh, in the world. So I looked up this guy. Went through some things about kind of people, and uh, he's got a very interesting idea. So let me spend just a yeah. Just what, are, a minute. What, are, what are these twelve stupid things? Well, we we talk about people can do stupid things occasionally, yeah. but this is Mark Manson. Okay, and uh, and and if you would just allow me a little bit here, uh, here's the guy before we get into it and uh, who should you take seriously so here's this this author and thinker and life enthusiast uh, Mark Manson and we may come back to him again but okay. he uh, he has put together uh, some a real interesting idea and here's an article called 12 stupid things people care about way too much I like that all right so uh, let's scroll down you know we'll, that could we'll almost the... be your list Mike you could come in every week with 12 stupid things yeah you know, <laughs> you know I, I, like I may that. be able to do that <laughs> yeah. real quick I know you can so just real quick and we won't spend much time we need probably need to spend more time on this one for sure but whose fault is it oh, and man. does it really matter oh, in man. the bigger scheme oh, of man. things I'm fighting you about this and that and what does it mean? We always got to blame somebody, huh? Well, here's another one. Celebrity and sports gossip. Do we really care what the Kim Kardashian thinks about something we about must. something? We must. We give it that much attention. Evidently, <laughs> we guess. do. Sexual jealousy, being right, national politics, trying to impress other people. People. Hmm. Hey, don't you think I'm uh, I'm really smart over here, Jeff? I'm I'm trying to do something that's sort of intellectual. Well, that's why you're always putting things out on social media and oh, you know, goodness trying to gracious. impress me. <laughs> All right, I'm being offended. You know, you're, I, I just offended you now. So, yeah, yeah, you, you yeah, just you just did, yeah, and yeah. I I I can't believe there'll be probably an act of violence to follow. <laughs> well, wait, well, hold it, hold it. <laughs> let's don't uh, let's don't go too far with it. But I'm the, just the, saying that's the from the article. Fake, the being offended the. So Sort of the fake version of yes. that. I'm offended yes. that somebody said something about someone else, and now I've got to put my two cents in there. Or, or that you were open and honest. Um, buying a bunch of nice stuff. What is nice stuff? I'm not really sure. Uh, we uh, Impressing people, but feeling better about yourself and uh, buying luxury items and buying all of the stuff that make you feel a certain way. Is, is, uh, that, is that nice stuff? Because I honestly, I wasn't sure. Waiting in line for 36 hours to buy some new product the day it's released. I know you've done this no, a lot. I, I've never done that for a product in my entire life. I've done it for Jimmy Buffett tickets. Okay. okay you know, right, I, I've right. done it, but it wasn't a product. It was Jimmy Buffett. Come on. We got to, you know. Number 12, hiding my flaws. Yeah, people fall in love with each other's rough edges. Um, so wh what he's saying here is being authentic, basically. Wow. And uh, wow. oh, you're trying to put on a front, as my son used to say back in the day. Sure. Uh, this vulnerability, who who you are, and he he quotes this of Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson. of all of <laughs> guy, all people, right? A guy that we're always looking towards. Just because you're philosophy. famous doesn't mean you're successful. Okay, and mm -hmm. so the, generally speaking, the idea of being famous is something, and, and I've heard this right, actually right. said. I, I, I've read uh, somewhere when you ask kids what they want to be when they grow up. Famous. It's famous. Yeah. Are you kidding yeah. me? Well, uh, and, and how about a fireman? The, look, in a, look at the other words he has there, though, what you could replace it with. Just because you're popular doesn't mean you're successful. Right. Or just because you're intelligent doesn't mean you're successful. And those all fit. I think that was a good one. I, I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad. So uh, we we may come back to Mark Manson again uh, uh, in the days to come and see what his ideas are. But I just wanted to start this whole say that in this episode with a, a a new format that we'll be I, looking at I like uh, next time. And we're we're still going to allow you, uh, Jeff, to rant anytime, <laughs> anytime you want to. <laughs> and I like the lighter say. note at the end, Mike. It's it's a good way to end. You know? All right, I tried a, to do that with marijuana, but you know. Okay, yeah, I, thought, I was wondering turn. where you were going with that. Turn, gonna, you know? We'll take a we'll take a look at that. But listen, any time I get to talk with you, my friend, it's a good day, and well, so I appreciate you being here in the studio. Thank and, you. And nobody does talk like Jeff. <laughs>